is DeepSeek deep sunk. Arguably, people are looking more for an R2 than they were a V3.1. And did DeepSeek just have its llama 4 kind of moment? I did start doing some digging and looking into the numbers that we have seen around some popular open source as well as the most popular alternatives out there that are closed source, and there definitely is a trend. And there are new emerging players in the game that are very interesting also. Now, DeepSeek definitely landed on the scene with an amazing smash hit with R1. They had already been releasing things prior to that, so a lot of people don't even realize DeepSeek had been around before R1 and releasing models. In the open source ecosystem, they just had not gained a tremendous amount of traction at that point. But what is the momentum today? We are vastly farther away from the point where R1 launched than we are probably closer to where R2 is going to be launched if the V3.1 is any indicator. There's a lot of talk out there that we should not expect an R2 also, and I wanted to give my opinion on that. So definitely, if you look at the Google Trends metrics for worldwide on YouTube search, you can see that DeepSeek had a real moment and that was, of course, back at the end of January, beginning of February, and they actually outstripped OpenAI and ChatGPT as a search term, which very unusual to do that. OpenAI has been working at this a long time, and they actually have a very good marketing effort and good marketing outreach. If you see here, when they have a hit success, they usually rebound just a little bit higher. That's market traction gaining share of attention and maintaining it. This was, of course, I think March 30th through April 5th, probably the Ghibli thing that went insane, and that actually grew their market share quite a bit of interested people. You can see some other releases that have kind of been smaller bumps than that, and maintaining that is hard to do. I'm gonna make the argument that DeepSeek has failed to do that over the long term, and as a result, you've seen an erosion of search for DeepSeek. I certainly noticed this when I released the latest DeepSeek 3.1 video, and I was like, I thought it was a very few amount of people that were interested in DeepSeek. That surprised me. I actually expected much bigger interest. So I started looking around at other creators, and I saw similar trends. I did a little bit of napkin math that was very unscientific, but I saw that the views were about 40x lower. That's pretty big across YouTube for the search term and the views that it was getting for DeepSeek. Now, DeepSeek certainly challenged and made a lot of headlines because the lowered cost of training was at the time interpreted to mean that there would be less demand for GPUs. That really hasn't turned into the case, and a lot of the people that made that case have kind of backtracked on it because they realize the inference time compute needs are going to go higher, especially as you have models like DeepSeek that eat more tokens in reasoning mode. So when we see DeepSeek peaking at 100 here, well, 96, uh, it definitely outstripped ChatGPT for a hot couple of weeks there. It was the thing. Once it fell down, though, it just has failed to get traction back. So this is actually a really interesting kind of phenomenon to observe. Certainly, see, you see a tremendous amount of interest that is in China. If you look in China, Macau, Hong Kong, you can see that they have more interest in DeepSeek than what we see outside of China. Definitely, it shifts over to GPT when you start looking outside those realms. If you take a look at the release cycle recently for DeepSeek, before 11 days ago, three months was the most recent, they have really big spans of time where they don't release anything. They don't have marketing, and for the most part, it's framed as they don't care. I would argue that if they actually don't care, this is the natural reaction to see from an audience of people who are consumers. If you're not marketing, people stop being interested also. Now, if we look at Quinn, substantially more that is released from this company. It is substantially wider breadth also, if you consider some of the things with WAN and the video generation and image generation that they do with WAN image edit, especially being really popular right now, They've got a lot of traction. They've got a lot of releases. They probably have, it looks like, team members 145 versus 29, a much bigger team as well. That's just what we see on Hugging Face also. I do think that has a lot to do with what we would expect to see next. 
I think popularity of really huge models versus medium-sized models is going to be a big trend. Now, Kimi K2 aside, I think when you're looking at Quinn, they pretty much nailed it with 235 being a really good size choice for local. And you see that they have a really big interest with Quinn of releasing things all the way from the top end all the way down to the smaller end. So just getting releases 10 days ago of a new 480B uh, A35B Instruct FP8 for the Quinn 3 coder. And of course, all the way down to the Quinn 3 thinkings that happened about 14 days ago. So definitely when you look at recent trends, you can see that Quinn very, very much uh, clawing their way has gained quite a bit of relative market share of interest in search worldwide over the past 90 days, especially starting right around middle of July. And you can see the spike up here to almost half of what DeepSeek's interest is. I think that is very telling. And I think it actually makes a lot of sense. People are interested in what they can run locally, and especially people that are looking for whether or not they can get a frequent release that is going to be incrementally better. Quinn does deliver amazing inc incremental releases that are better. And I think people really notice that. I think people really do like that. And so whether or not DeepSeek has issues that are on deck is a good question. I know there is a lot of talk about the chips they're using, the chips they're using to train, and whether they're gonna be domestically produced or not. So just talking generically about this, if they are behind and if they are not yet capable of keeping up, then that could be interpreted as them not having an advantage. Now that could because of it could be because of cost scales, that could be because of government pressure. It is fairly certain that there was government ask for and attempt by DeepSeek to use the Huawei Ascend chips for training recently and that they were not able to keep up is a pretty good indicator. Now let's look at what I call a good nerd trust kind of search. So. Hacker news, a lot of people searching for AI stuff, probably one of the biggest places for people searching for AI stuff outside of Reddit and places like Local Llama. So if you take a look here over the popularity by stories for all time and just the search term deep seek, you can see that everything aside from nine days ago, which was the 3.1 announcement, that is pretty telling right there. The market share of impact that they're having with the 3.1 is nothing. So pretty much, I don't think that I expect to see DeepSeek in the news. As a matter of fact, I think the DeepSeek moment has passed. Quinn is damned interesting. GLM, amazing. And we see other people coming out with really good models and pushing the boundary, even with just minor changes to things like VLLM that can include better selective pruning of branches of thought earlier and give better results overall. That was really the innovation. That was kind of the big market innovation that we saw with DeepSeek that does not look like it's going to equate to lower demand for GPUs worldwide. I think that's a fairly safe and certain statement to make at this point in time. While a lot of people ask about AMD, a lot of people ask about other chips, there's a ton of them out there now, but definitely big green is hard to beat. NVIDIA has quite a bit of momentum. And so if you opt to go with a stack that is not NVIDIA based, a really good question is, how much of a disadvantage are you at? Well, it looks like it could be actually a significant disadvantage. And I think that we saw that with the fairly paltry release of DeepSeek V3.1. Not something that people were screaming from the rooftops about, not something people are searching about, not making the news headlines, and Literally, a trailing edge tech. Didn't feel like it was a revolutionary thing at all. So, I look forward to reading what you guys have to say about this. I think the trends that we see in AI, especially as it relates to the technology that's being used to train them, are something that people are definitely interested in keeping up with. So, I wanted to get this piece out there because I was thinking about it today while I was watching some rain. And I was like, hmm, we really didn't get the release from DeepSeek 3.1 that I thought we were gonna get. And then I did a little digging and I definitely found that it has fallen off. Deep sea, well, looks sunk. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I look forward to reading your comments down below. Roast me, give me rah rahs. I will say none of this is sponsored content. I don't have a relationship formally with any of these companies or anything like that. I make no money from any of them. So these are just my own thoughts and I look forward to reading your own thoughts. Big shout out to all of our channel members. I really do appreciate you guys joining. Everybody have a good rest of your day and I will check you out next time.